Good morning, students. Today I will teach you one chapter from class ninth biology syllabus, that is respiration in plants. Now, in class nine, you have got to study about the respiratory system in animals as well. But first, we will deal with the respiration in plants, and on the next day, we can start the respiratory system in animals. <coughs> now, what is respiration? respiration is a catabolic process catabolic means what now the metabolism which goes on in our body first we should know what is metabolism the sum total of all the reactions which are going on inside our body is known as metabolism metabolism can be of two types it can be anabolism or it can be catabolism now anabolism means many simple substances are brought together and they form a complex substance say for example photosynthesis here we find many simple substances like carbon dioxide, water, etc. are being brought together and they are forming glucose which is a complex substance. So, that is an example of anabolism. And catabolism, catabolism means the breaking up of the complexes, complex substances into simple substances. Like we have the food materials or say glucose C6H12O6. When that is broken down to form simple substances, then that becomes catabolism. So, I can say respiration is an example of catabolism. In the case of animals, you have got digestion which is also catabolism. The complex substances are getting broken down into simple substances. So, how do we define respiration? It is a catabolic process which assimilates oxygen or which utilizes oxygen and it uh, produces the end products like carbon dioxide and water. And of course, a lot of energy is produced. The energy that is required uh, by our body to do all the different functions that has been provided by respiration. Okay, the same is true for the plants also. They get the energy requirements by the process of respiration. So, when we actually, after definition, we have to go to the overall equation. So, quite often they give this question, define respiration and give the overall equation of respiration. So, if they ask you about the overall equation, you have to go for the first equation that is C6H12O6 which is glucose that in the presence of oxygen is getting converted to CO2 and H2O and it is producing energy 674 kilocalories of energy which is equal to 38 ATP. So, you can also write 38 ATP. Okay, So, here the complex substance is combining with oxygen and it is forming carbon dioxide which is a simple substance and of course water vapor and then you are getting this energy okay now when we, this this example in this example you can see that oxygen is being utilized so we can call it aerobic respiration the respiration in which oxygen is required or rather used up that is known as aerobic respiration now apart from that aerobic respiration apart from that Respiration can also occur in the absence of oxygen that is known as anaerobic respiration, anaerobic, okay. If you know the spelling of aerobic just in front of that you add an that means in the absence of oxygen. So, there what do you get C6H12O6 which is a substrate, this is the glucose and here it, it will not combine with oxygen because I told you there is no utilization of oxygen here. So, from this you are getting ethyl alcohol. This is C6, C2H5OH, this is ethyl alcohol and this is produced in the plants and carbon dioxide is formed and lesser amount of energy is being formed. You can see in the first case when oxygen was utilized, it produced 674 kilocals of energy which was equivalent to 38 ATP. Now here you will find less amount of energy is produced when it is not utilizing oxygen. That means in case of anaerobic respiration, less amount of energy is produced and this is equivalent to 2 ATP. Okay. So, if they ask you the differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration, number of differences are there. From the equation, you can understand that in aerobic, oxygen is utilized 
and it produces carbon dioxide, water vapor, etc. And here you can see oxygen is not utilized and it is producing ethyl alcohol carbon dioxide. Here more energy is being formed, here less energy is being formed. Here there is complete oxidation and of the glucose to form these substances and since oxygen is not involved in the second case, I cannot say that the thing is getting oxidized. Okay. Now, this product which you are getting C2H5OH, this is a product that is ethyl alcohol. This product is formed in the case of the plants. That means when anaerobic respiration takes place in the plants, then this uh, product is formed. Now, in the case of animals, you just remember the name, in the case of animals, in place of this C2H5OH, you will be getting lactic acid. That means in place of ethyl alcohol, lactic acid will be formed if anaerobic respiration takes place in the animals. And also keep one thing in mind, that is in case of anaerobic respiration in animals, carbon dioxide will not be formed. Okay, so if they ask you to write two differences between the anaerobic respiration in plants and anaerobic respiration in animals, what will be the differences? First one, in anaerobic respiration in plants, ethyl alcohol is formed. In anaerobic respiration in animals, lactic acid is formed. In anaerobic respiration in the plants, carbon dioxide is formed. Whereas in the anaerobic respiration in animals, carbon dioxide is not formed. So these are the two main differences between anaerobic respiration in plants and anaerobic respiration in animals. Okay. Now, we'll go to the two phases of respiration, which you don't have to study in details. Just a basic idea we'll do. One is glycolysis and the other one is Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle. Okay. So how do you differentiate it? Now it is the first phase of respiration, glycolysis. This becomes the second phase of respiration. That means when respiration starts, it starts with glycolysis and then is followed by the Krebs cycle. Second one you can say this glycolysis is actually anaerobic in nature, okay. It is anaerobic. I told you the meaning of anaerobic, it does not involve oxygen. It is anaerobic in nature and this Krebs cycle is aerobic in nature that means it involves oxygen. Now since it is anaerobic in nature that is why it, is, it occurs in the cytoplasm of a cell and Krebs cycle occurs in the mitochondria. Okay. So glycolysis is anaerobic, it is the first phase of the respiration, it is anaerobic and it is, form, it, it, it is performed in the cytoplasm. Krebs cycle is aerobic in nature, that means it involves oxygen and it is uh, it's performed in the mitochondria. Now in the third point you can say in glycolysis, the glucose is getting converted to, the glucose gets converted to pyruvic acid and here you will find from the pyruvic acid in Krebs cycle, from pyruvic acid you will be getting the end products that is carbon dioxide, water vapor etc. Okay. Got it? Now, so if you are asked to sum up all the points, anaerobic respiration taking place in cytoplasm, aerobic respiration taking place in mitochondria, this represents the first phase, this represents the second phase, glucose is converted to pyruvic acid and, and from there pyruvic acid, you uh, finally you get the products of respiration that is carbon dioxide and H2O. Okay? Now we will come to the experiments. Before we come to the experiments, a little bit I have to tell you about fermentation. Now, I want you people to note down this part because quite often you are not able to give a complete answer about this fermentation. So just two lines you write down. Under anaerobic conditions, Certain microorganisms like yeast convert blood sugar into alcohol. 
that means it is also a type of anaerobic respiration you already know the equation of anaerobic respiration you know how from C6H12O6 you are getting ethyl alcohol okay so here also you will find that the same reaction is prevalent here that the only difference is that it is taking place it is uh, it is actually being performed by the yeast okay and it is uh, taking the help of a particular enzyme which is called zymase that means when the anaerobic respiration is performed by yeast with the help of a particular enzyme called zymase then that type of anaerobic respiration is known as fermentation so what are what are the important commercial products which we get as a result of fermentation we can get acetic acid we can get lactic acid okay all these products we can get different categories of wine okay ethyl alcohol okay so all these things these are the commercial products which we obtain from fermentation this part is very important they might ask you what is fermentation how is it performed write the overall equation of fermentation it will be the same equation same as anaerobic respiration the only thing is that you have to mention that here yeast is carrying out this process and it is making use of the enzyme called zymase z y m a s e so remember the name of the enzyme zymase it can be given as a short question also with the help of zymase fermentation takes place what are the products different forms of alcohol you can get lactic acid acetic acid etc now we'll go to the experiments now Now this is an experiment for showing aerobic respiration. Experiment for showing aerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration means, as I told you before, respiration in the presence of oxygen. So it is to demonstrate aerobic respiration. You have to show that the seeds which you are taking here are undergoing aerobic respiration. How they are doing it? For this, we need a setup. We need a structure which is known as a respiroscope. Okay, now this structure which we have is this container which we get is the respiroscope. Means it is an apparatus with the help of which we show the experiments of respiration in plants. Respiroscope. In this container, we have taken some seeds, living seeds. Okay, and we have this is a clamp stand because it cannot stand like this isn't it so we have to clamp it in position Achha, next clamp and stand this is a container or you can say beaker also container which has got mercury inside it mercury so you can see this is filled up with mercury we have taken the respiroscope and we have inverted it inside we have put the seeds and we have inverted in such a manner that the stem is in contact with this mercury which is found inside the beaker. And one important thing we have taken over here is KOH. We have taken a stick, like just like a chalk stick, okay. So we have taken a stick of KOH, potassium hydroxide. Stick of KOH. Okay. Now we will allow the experiment to go on. Now you can see the seeds are present so they will respire. So if they respire what will they do? They will utilize the oxygen that is present inside this structure isn't it? Inside the respiroscope. Respiroscope contains air in it. We have not taken out the air from it isn't it? It contains air. So if it contains air it also contains oxygen. Okay. Now the seeds when they respire we are, we are showing aerobic respiration that means the seeds will be utilizing the oxygen. So when it utilizes the oxygen and carries out respiration what does it form? It forms carbon dioxide. So it is utilizing oxygen and it is giving out carbon dioxide. So the oxygen which is utilized by it is, I mean that space there, 
uh, which is being formed as a result of utilization of oxygen that is being filled up by the carbon dioxide which is formed by the um, in this particular process. Now this K8 stick which we have taken that has got the capacity of absorbing the CO2. So when it absorbs the CO2 which has been produced during the experiment then a vacuum is being produced a partial vacuum is produced and to fill up that the mercury will start entering into the stem of the respiroscope. So what did I tell? Respiroscope contains air inside it. So the oxygen of that air will be utilized by the seeds for respiration and they will be producing CO2 that means they are carrying out aerobic respiration and to trap that CO2 we have put one stick of KOH inside it so that as soon as the KOH is I mean is trapping the carbon dioxide there is a vacuum created and that to fill up that partial vacuum the mercury will rise up. So you can see the mercury rising up in the stem of the respiroscope. Okay, so why is it rising up? As it is ab absorbing carbon dioxide. Where did the carbon dioxide come from? It uh, came from the process of respiration. So we can say that the seeds are performing aerobic respiration which produced carbon dioxide. Okay, now how much will this level rise up? Means how much the mercury will rise up in the respiroscope? That will be equal to one-fifth of the volume of the respiroscope one-fifth of the volume. Why? Because one-fifth of the volume of the air is occupied by oxygen. One-fifth of the volume is, is oxygen. Okay. So that uh, part will be occupied by this Hg. So it will rise up to that level. Okay. From, from this we can explain aerobic respiration in the seeds. Next one is anaerobic respiration. anaerobic respiration that means respiration in the absence of air for this we need one test tube Okay, so what we have done? We have taken one test tube and we have completely filled it up with mercury. And then we have just taken the open end of the test tube and we have put our thumb over there. We have closed the mouth of the test tube with our thumb and we have inverted that inside a trough which contains mercury, Hg mercury. Okay, so this test tube is also filled up with mercury and this trough which we have that is all that also contains mercury. So we have just inverted that over it and gradually we are going to remove the finger. So it will form a continuous column of mercury. Now what we will do, we will take the, with the help of forceps, we are going to pick up some seeds and we will just release the seeds from the bottom. So the seeds being lighter will float and it will occupy the top of the, this, this test tube, inverted test tube. Okay. Try to understand carefully. We have taken one test tube which is completely filled up with mercury. Supposing this is a test tube, it's completely filled up with mercury. Now this is the open end of the mercury. So if you invert it, the mercury will fall down. So we have just taken the open end of the mercury and we have closed it with the thumb. And then we have inverted this and brought it on the level of the mercury in the trough. And gradually when we bring it down to this level and gradually when we remove the finger, we will find one continuous column of mercury here. Now we have to introduce the seeds inside it because we have not taken the seeds so far. So after we get a continuous column of mercury, we are going to take the forceps and with the help of that, we will just take one seed and we will from the bottom we will release it. So it will go on floating, it will come to the top. 
of the inverted test tube okay similarly second seat third seat this way we will make all the seats come and occupy the top over here so why are we doing all these things why are we completely filling up the test tube with mercury we have to ensure that there is no oxygen no air inside this test tube if it is completely filled up with mercury then we can be sure that there is no uh, oxygen because we have to show anaerobic respiration we have to show the respiration in the absence of oxygen there should be no oxygen left in the or air left in the test tube okay now we will keep the setup like this so actually the seeds they will aspire when the seeds which you are using here we have to remove the test seed coat of these seeds why because sometimes oxygen remain trapped with the seed coat so just remove the seed coat so it is completely oxygen free and then we can use the seeds for this experiment now if we keep the setup like this and if we allow the seeds to carry out anaerobic respiration then what will happen what are the products of anaerobic respiration we have seen that carbon dioxide comes out carbon dioxide will always come out whether it is aerobic respiration or anaerobic anaerobic respiration okay Achha, now this carbon dioxide which is being uh, produced as a result of anaerobic respiration that carbon dioxide is going to push the mercury down and occupy the space at the top so after uh, some time how will this apparatus look like means we have started the experiment with this type of an apparatus okay so this is our observation the initial stage now what will be our final observation after some time okay now this is our rough sketch i've drawn so after some time you will find that a gap will be produced at the top of the seeds you will see that the seeds have come down the seeds have come down and a gap is produced that means this gap is being filled up by a gas if you test it this gas is nothing but carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide will bring about the downward displacement of the mercury because it has to occupy some space isn't it carbon dioxide has been produced as a result of respiration so that has to occupy some space so it is allowing the seeds to move down rather the mercury level is also falling down and this space over here is being filled up with carbon dioxide so we can see that respiration anaerobic respiration is taking place and the seeds are producing carbon dioxide which is getting collected here and the the mercury because it's lighter than the mercury so and the mercury is level is coming down okay now to test that it is carbon dioxide is not something else we can take a stick of kwh as we have done in the previous experiment we can take a stick of kwh and we will with the help of the forceps we will introduce here so as soon as the stick of kwh is introduced how will it look like means after the introduction of the kwh it will look like this this is one this is two this is three that means you can see one and three are the same isn't it why this carbon dioxide which has been produced and collected at the top that will be absorbed by the kwh as soon as it is absorbed again the things will come up so again you will get the uh, initial setup isn't it again you will find that the mercury has level has come up and the seeds will also move up so when we allow the respiration to take place due to the formation of co2 a gap is been produced here and the moment we are introducing one kwh inside it you will find that this kwh will just it will float here because kwh is also very light so where as we release it it will float it will come here it will come in contact with the co2 it will absorb that and again this level will rise up so we will get the setup like this okay so from this we can conclude anaerobic respiration has taken place in the test tube by the this seeds so if we take dead seeds we will not be getting it we will not be getting this this thing if we take dead seeds say for example if we carry out the experiment with dead seeds then what will happen we will not be getting this carbon dioxide because it will not carry out respiration okay so it will be just like this only now <coughs> let us go to the third experiment so i have already means, uh, taught you two experiments one showing anaerobic respiration one showing aerobic respiration and now 
we have to show that heat is produced during respiration heat is produced during respiration so for that reason we will take one so heat production during respiration heat production heat production during respiration for this we will take one flask the flask is like this isn't it this is a flask and we have taken seeds over here and we will just close the mouth of the flask these are the living seeds now we are going to put one thermometer through this for recording the temperature okay now when we actually do the experiment we have to ensure that the bulb of the thermometer comes in contact with the seeds so that it is able to record the heat production how much heat is being produced that can be recorded so this bulb of the thermometer has to come in contact with the seeds for that reason we are going to invert the whole thing so when we invert it how does it become Okay, so you'll find all the seeds. This is a thermometer. Okay, so you will find the seeds are coming in contact with the thermometer, with the bulb of the thermometer. If we keep the setup like this, we might, uh, the seeds might not be in contact with the bulb of the thermometer. That's why for this experiment, generally, we invert the flask. So if we invert it, so all the seeds will fall down over here so automatically it will come in contact with the bulb of the thermometer and it can record the temperature so if this experiment is carried out we have taken one flask the seeds are in this position the thermometer is also there so at the start of the experiment we will take the temperature then after some time we will see that the temperature has increased why because the seeds have carried out respiration and they have produced heat that's why after some time when we try to record the temperature we'll find that there is an increase in the temperature now if we carry out the same experiment with the help of dead seeds then you will find and but dead seeds should be sterilized that reason you should know why the dead seeds should be sterilized because the dead seeds uh, means uh, they can be decomposed isn't it means uh, the, they can be acted upon by the bacteria or microorganisms so that's why we have to sterilize it so when we sterilize it the bacteria won't be there if there is no bacteria then they can, cannot carry out respiration okay so first sterilize the seeds dead seeds and carry out the same setup means we do it in the same way you will find that the initial temperature and the final temperature will not differ why because dead seeds have not been able to carry out respiration so they could not produce heat if we do the same experiment with the living seeds then you will find that there will be a change in the temperature the temperature is going to increase okay so we have done three experiments today and one experiment is still left and two or three questions i need to discuss with you which we will do in the next class okay